Um, thank you very much, Maria. Very uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, you've all got full stomachs. Uh, I'm sure you've got agile minds, uh, the graveyard slot. So uh, there's quite a lot I'm going to pack into this uh, period uh, of what we're doing. Um, so bear with me for a little bit uh, and follow me. Uh, if I see you dozing off, I will suddenly talk very loud. <laughs> but um, very good to be here. Uh, so, artificial intelligence, the revolution uh, has been predicted before. And ten years ago, uh, those who thought about artificial intelligence probably imagined uh, a computer programmed with a vast data bank of human acquired knowledge. They probably had uh, that uh, test that Alan Turing proposed. Before I get to that, how many of you knew that Alan Turing was conceived in India? Not in the Nilgiris. Anyway, <laughs> so you can claim it. Um, the test that Alan Turing proposed that if a person having a natural language conversation with someone they cannot see is unable to tell that they are communicating with the machine, then we have achieved artificial intelligence. Uh, they were almost certainly envisaging a pre-programmed uh, machine, but of course the limitations of the pre-programmed computers is that uh, they can only do, uh, by definition, what they've been programmed to do. IBM's uh, Deep Blue, you'll remember, shocked the world when it beat uh, Gary Kasparov, uh, but Deep Blue uh, executed a program where it wasn't programmed, it couldn't operate. This time, uh, we're sure the revolution is here to stay. Uh, there are three factors which seem to make that pretty certain. Uh, we're rich in data. Uh, in the last two years, we've created more data than in the previous course of human history. Uh, and data feeds, of course, AI. Computational uh, capacity has grown uh, over a trillion fold since Alan Turing posited a test, the old uh, adage that you now hold in your hand more computing power uh, than the total NASA uh, space mission when it was going to the moon. Uh, and our changing education systems have now provided us with the talent to exploit the opportunities. In the UK, uh, computer science is the fastest growing undergraduate course. So we have data, uh, capacity and talent. We're now uh, in a world where computers have been taught to learn where they can adapt using techniques such as reinforcement learning based on how humans learn, deep learning, that incremental uh, learning. And as the London-based uh, Google DeepMind has pioneered deep reinforcement learning, the world's first perception to action, end-to-end -end learning system. Uh, last year, DeepMind's Alpha Zero taught itself to play chess in four hours and then defeated the Blue successor. Uh, and now DeepMind is working in collaboration with clinicians at Moorfields Hospital. They've developed AI technology which can automatically detect eye conditions in seconds and prioritize those patients in urgent need of care, uh, matching the accuracy of expert doctors with over 20 years' experience. That triaging uh, obviously will dra drastically cut down the time taken between detection and treatment, making it much less likely that those conditions are going to lead to sight loss. Uh, AI is going to change the world. Uh, the UK uh, and India are in a unique position to shape and to benefit from this. Nearly 10% of AI startups are based in the UK. India uh, is also in the top 10 countries for AI startups and were respectively the fourth and the sixth largest publishers of AI research. Uh, in April this year, Mr. Modi uh, visited London and with Mrs. May announced uh, our groundbreaking UK-India technology partnership, the tech partnership. Central bit of that is uh, the joint vision of, of our future relationship. Under that partnership, we're going to share knowledge, uh, we're going to collaborate on research, innovate, uh, and create partnerships between 
uh, world-class innovation clusters. We'll deploy uh, complementary technological strengths to create high-value jobs, enhance productivity, promote trade and investment and tackle shared challenges. Uh, India and the UK are going to scale up collaboration on future tech and to tackle those global challenges that we face, realize uh, the potential of artificial intelligence, uh, the digital economy, health technologies, cyber security, and promoting clean growth uh, and smart urbanization and future mobility. And at the same time as all that, uh, develop the future skills and capabilities of our youth. Uh, we'll create a tech hub in <coughs> India, bringing together high-tech companies, including AI startups, to create investment, uh, to export opportunities, provide a new platform to share the very best technologies and advance uh, policy collaboration. Under the tech partnership, we're working with colleagues in Niti Aayog to roll out uh, healthcare AI in support of Ayushman Bharat. Uh, again, with Niti Aayog, we are establishing a new type of partnership between the UK regional and Indian state level tech clusters. Uh, those partnerships will match UK and Indian regional strengths in AI and data and future mobility. The pilots uh, are uh, with the UK Midlands Engine and Maharashtra uh, and the UK Northern Powerhouse and Karnataka. We have started on implementing that. We link these uh, centers of excellence to enable shared innovation and technology exchange, allowing our innovative startups to work together and to commercialize much faster, creating high quality jobs and productivity growth across India and the UK. There are other strands of the tech partnership, uh, which uh, have seen the creation of an India-UK tech CEO alliance focused on skills and on new technologies, uh, an expanded fintech award scheme to boost uh, entrepreneurship, including uh, industry-led apprenticeship schemes, uh, launched the new UK fintech awards to boost those entrepreneurship and set up uh, at the same time under DFID a startup fund. And again, uh, with the support of colleagues in the TIO, we are conducting a study of how we might design and fund uh, a UK India future manufacturing centre along the lines of our unsuccessful catapult model. So uh, the UK India a tech partnership builds on very strong foundations, including a world-class collaborative research that we both do. We deploy, both of us, the best uh, of our talent in science, research, and technology to address priority global challenges. Uh, the UK is India's second largest international research and innovation partner. Our UK India Newton Baba program will have lifted joint research and innovation uh, awards to over 400 million by 2021 from uh, a zero base in 2008. And at the same time, that partnership, that tech partnership, builds on our mutual commercial interests. And UK is <laughs> the largest G20 investor in India. India invests more in the UK than in the rest of the EU combined. 30, about a third of the Indian companies operating in the UK, over 800 companies operating in the UK, uh, are operating in the uh, technology and innovation sector. Uh, the tech partnership uh, is also going to support us in achieving the ambitions set out in the TIO's uh, AI strategy. But it's also going to uh, support, from the UK angle, what's in the UK's uh, industrial strategy. And I just want to talk a bit about uh, some of that uh, framework uh, in which uh, the UK is going to be operating. So the aim of that uh, industrial strategy is to boost UK productivity by backing businesses to create good jobs uh, and increase the earning power of people throughout the UK with investment in skills, in industries uh, and in infrastructure. Uh, we're doing that through a variety of ways. Firstly, strengthening 
the very foundations of productivity, the fundamentals uh, that support a skilled, innovative, geographically balanced economy. And the five foundations for that are encouraging the UK to be the world's most innovative economy, uh, ensuring good jobs, greater earning power for all, driving a, a major upgrade to the UK's infrastructure, guaranteeing uh, it to be the best place to start and expand a business and create prosperous communities across the UK. Secondly, we'll be building long-term strategic partnerships with businesses throughout a variety of sector deals between government and industry. And they present really significant opportunities to tackle the barriers to growth, to boost uh, productivity in specific sectors, uh, and to further collaborate and ensure high quality jobs. Thirdly, we will take on the grand challenges, the society changing opportunities and industries of the future where we can build on our emerging and indeed established strengths to become a world leader. First, four grand challenges are focused on global trends to transform our future, which will put the UK at the forefront of the AI and data revolution. We will harness the power of innovation to meet the needs of an aging society. We will maximize the advantages for UK industry from the global shift uh, to clean growth. Uh, and we will become a world leader in shaping the future of mobility. Uh, in April this year, the UK government announced uh, the AI sector deal. Uh, that's a deal uh, which is the first commitment from the government and industry to realize the AI potential. It outlines a package of up to about 1 billion pounds of support for the sector, and that includes government, industry, uh, and academic contributions. The sector deal sets out uh, actions to promote the adoption uh, and the use of AI in the UK, it delivers on the recommendations of uh, the independent AI review, or growing the AI industry in the UK. The authors of that uh, review engage widely with businesses, with academia, uh, investors, and other stakeholders on ways to boost the UK's emerging AI sector at home and across the world. Uh, it sets out proposals to improve the institutions that support AI in the United Kingdom, to build the skilled workforce I've talked about and to stimulate access to data collectively at the lifeblood of any AI business. That sector deal draws on the government's digital strategy which focuses on reinforcing our strengths in telecoms, in data and in enterprise. A key ambition of the industrial strategy is for the UK to be the world's most innovative economy. The sector deal aims to attract and to retain uh, both the domestic and the global AI talent. Uh, and that's the combination of those two uh, programs. As I said, the industrial strategy has people at its core. It's focused on creating good jobs, great earning power. To do that, uh, we must equip the citizens for the jobs shaped by the next generation of technology. So uh, expanding AI industry in the UK uh, outlined the fast growing demand for expertise to develop and to apply AI technologies and proposed the ways to increase and supply the skills at different levels. Ensuring that the UK has the right digital infrastructure, both the physical and uh, crucially the data infrastructure, is of course absolutely critical to meeting our ambition uh, of leading the world in AI. That's why as part of the industrial strategy, we're investing uh, over a billion to create a country with world-class digital capabilities, from 5G mobile networks to full fiber broadband, uh, and equally important is the availability of data, which is required on that vast scale to train machine learning systems. Uh, the government and the public bodies are already leading the way in making public data sets open and available, but there do, of course, remain significant challenges to sharing private data, private sector data sets. 
uh, and through the sector deal, uh, we're going to tackle both the practical and the cultural barriers to sharing both uh, publicly and privately held data. As part of this, we're going to explore data sharing frameworks such as data trusts, which are mechanisms where parties have uh, defined rights and responsibilities with respect to shared data in order to protect sensitive data, uh, but to facilitate access to it uh, and to ensure accountability. That's going to allow and ensure fair and equitable data sharing between the organizations in the private sector and between the private and the public sectors. To support that vision uh, and to make the UK the world's most innovative economy, uh, we are committing to work with the private sector to boost research and development spending by almost 2.5% by 2027 and 3% over the longer term. That begins with uh, £725 million uh, investment through the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund competition, which is designed precisely to capture the value of innovation by commercialising a great idea in the lab into a, a successful business. One early uh, commitment is uh, over 200 million challenge on research into the uh, early diagnosis of chronic illness, including very substantial investment in AI diagnostic techniques. The use of AI to, uh, is absolutely central to that work and includes programs applying AI to uh, raise output in sectors of the economy that have struggled with productivity from reducing crop disease uh, in the agricultural sector and delivering services digitally to the public sector. Uh, we're seeing industry respond to our commitment uh, to AI innovation with investments in research and development in the UK, uh, such as those from <coughs> major players uh, like Babylon, SwiftKey, Beyond Limits and uh, Element AI. It's emerging AI in its own right uh, as a nascent industry with the potential to raise the productivity of diverse sectors and to create entirely new jobs. Uh, to maximize that potential, we will establish a new AI council to bring together respected leaders in the field from across academia and industry uh, and a new delivery body within the government uh, called Artificial, the Office for Artificial Intelligence, which will support it. Uh, we'll increase the promotion of AI businesses globally and we're going to take steps to attract AI entrepreneurs to the UK. The recent report by Oxford Insights, which ranked the UK as top uh, for government readiness to implement AI. And these measures I've just outlined are going to allow us to capitalise on our R&D and uh, tech entrepreneur base. The industrial strategy set out the goal of uh, helping communities prosper, uh, growing uh, the AI industry in the UK, uh, outlined the thriving AI ecosystem that already exists. So London is the European capital of AI, while significant cl clusters exist in places such as Manchester, uh, Edinburgh, Belfast, Bristol and of course Cambridge. As important uh, as the growth of these clusters of expertise is, our ambition is for AI to be adopted by businesses across the country. The deal will help businesses uh, around the UK to enhance their use of AI and supported by the government's backing uh, for the expansion of Tech City UK and Tech North uh, into the national network of the tech nation. Uh, at the same time, we're expanding the academic commitment to AI across the UK as universities partner with the Alan Turing Institute, uh, the National Institute for Data Science and AI. There's a bunch of other announcements which I just want to run through quickly because cumulatively uh, I think it's important you get the message uh, about just the degree of work that goes into it. So a thousand new government funded AI PhDs will keep us, we believe, at the forefront of innovation and build uh, our status <coughs> as the research hotspot. Uh, Cambridge University is opening a new £10 million AI supercomputer, making its infrastructure available to businesses. Uh, the venture capital 
uh, firm Chrysalix is uh, going to establish a European HQ in the UK and use it to invest up to 110 million pounds in AI and robotics. Alan the Turing Institute and Rolls Royce are jointly uh, running a research project, a series of research projects exploring how data science can be applied, applied at scale, uh, the application of AI across supply chains, uh, and data centric engineering and predictive maintenance. The government is going to build on its reputation uh, as an international hub. Uh, and provide 20 million of funding to help the UK service industries, including uh, law and insurance, with new pilot projects to identify how AI can transform and enhance their operations. And we've uh, pledged uh, a further 21 million of funding to create Tech Nation. I mentioned a new UK wide organisation working across the country to create a high growth. A tech network for ambitious entrepreneurs. One of Tech Nation's new goals will be to establish uh, an internationally respected program for mid-stage AI companies to help bring them to scale. The deal uh, also announced the world's first centre for data ethics. We want to ensure that all AI developments in Britain are conducted uh, according to the highest ethical standards by establishing a centre for data ethics and innovation. Uh, so the £9 million centre is going to be a really important part of that uh, set of plans uh, to make the UK the best place uh, for businesses developing AI to grow and to thrive. It's going to address the challenges posed by the adoption of AI and advise on the measures needed to enable and ensure the safe, ethical and innovative use of data-driven technologies while helping to protect the consumer. Then under the uh, UK-India Technology Partnership, we're going to work, uh, of course, uh, together to ensure uh, uh, UK-India leadership in this sector. Uh, this month, we are holding the first, no, we held the first UK-India AI Roundtable with the Department of Science and Technology. We explored mechanisms and joint programmes to ensure our world-beating AI talent pools work together and learn from each other. And finally, uh, next month, with our partners, Niti Ayo, we're holding the first UK India Future Tech Festival in Delhi, bringing together tech innovators, scientists, policy makers, entrepreneurs, and venture capitalists, the whole uh, show. Uh, two years uh, after the Tech Summit in November 2016, uh, eight months after uh, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister May met in the UK. We're going to celebrate that and showcase our shared thought leadership and at the same time our tech partnership. And I look forward to seeing you there and I look forward to working with all of you uh, in this room. Thank you very much.